Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Rome Copilot bike phone mount. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO90. So this is a phone mount for your handlebars. It's very important to be able to see navigation, uh, skip around when you're listening to podcasts, etc. while you're riding your bike. So I definitely recommend um, that most people buy a phone mount uh, for their bike. This phone mount costs about $20 depending on uh, what retailer you find it on. So grip strength, um, this is definitely the most important thing about a phone holder uh, because like, your phone is a lot more expensive than most of the other things that are on your bike, so you, you definitely don't want that falling off when you're in the middle of a ride. So um, this uh, phone mount attaches to your handlebars with a grip that like screws down tightly. Um, ideally, you want to do this on like a straight portion of your handlebars, um, but mine don't have any straight portions that are like long enough, um, and so I had to screw it like right on a spot that's a slight bend um, and it still securely holds on so like that's good um, then it has a, a ball joint um, that lets you kind of adjust the angle at which the phone is facing relative to your uh, handlebars um, and you can screw that ball joint down tightly so that it doesn't like wobble around when you're riding over the potholes of St. Paul. Um, I haven't had any trouble with that. It's, it, you know, it's a good system. It uh, lets you loosen it up to kind of move it around when you want to, um, but it, is, uh, it, it can get tight enough that it's never going to really budge. Um, then it ca has a couple of like spring-loaded grips um, that uh, hold the phone on the left and right hand sides and they it centers the phone horizontally uh, on the phone holster. Um, but really like they aren't doing a whole lot of work to like keep your phone actually from falling out. Um, that is the job of this like rubber net that uh, kind of hooks over the four corners of your phone from behind and it holds that phone securely in place. Um, that's the part that's doing most of the work. Um, and all of those components together like work really well. I've never had any concerns with, uh, you know, about my phone, like almost slipping out or anything. Um, almost all of the times that I have actually dropped my phone were my own darn fault. Phone sizes. Uh, I honestly can't imagine a phone that would be like too big for this holster. The grips get very, very wide. Um, I think the, the website said that it can uh, accommodate phones that are up to like three and a half inches wide, which is, that's a very large phone um and like the rubber nets are very very stretchy um but still like have a lot of strength um so yeah like you wouldn't be able to fit you know i don't know a seven inch tablet in this thing um but uh i think anything that's marketed as a phone you would be just fine uh putting into this thing Durability. So this is kind of a mixed bag for this product. Um, I've been using it for almost two years now. Um, and I say that it's a mixed bag because like very, very early on, it started showing worrying signs of wear. So like there's lots of rust on the, the screw that holds it to the handlebar, um, but that doesn't seem to be affecting its ability to hold on. So I stopped worrying about that. Um, the most The most fragile part is definitely the spring-loaded grips that um, hold the phone from the left and right side. Um, they started like creaking after a couple of months, and then they started just popping out. Um, and the first time that that, that that happened, I thought, oh, pfft, it's time to get a new um, phone holster, I guess. But luckily, I figured out um, that they are pretty easy to like hook back into the spring and then pop them back into place. Um, and I've gotten... <laughs> ridiculously good at doing that pretty quickly because I've had to do it so many darn times. Like the grip does fall out. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times when I like pull the phone off of the phone mount, um, but it's never in danger of like popping out while I'm riding. Um, and honestly, even if it does pop out like while I'm riding, it's not a huge issue because like the rubber net is the part that's actually holding the phone onto the phone holster. Um, but it, it's just like, here I am using this phone holster, like all of the parts that are necessary for it to really do its job well are doing their jobs well. But like, because 
this this one part just like keeps falling off it it makes it feel like a super janky um product it's like like it's like i'm i'm flying the millennium falcon you know and it's like i know that it's gonna get me to point a from point a to point b but like you know is the journey in between going to be a smooth one Eh, i don't know not really and I'm the kind of person who's like, you know, I'm I'm willing to keep doing that dance for as long as like it keeps working for me. Um, which is, you know, I don't know if that's a reasonable uh way to approach things, but hey, that's what I'm doing. Uh it does come with several extra of the rubber nets. So um if I if one of those starts like cracking or whatever, um and you know, losing its its elasticity, uh I can replace it. Um I haven't had to replace mine yet. It's been a whole two years, so I'm very happy with that. Um, but I was able to use one of the rubber nets from it to help my mom solve an issue with the car mount, the phone mount that we got for her car, um, because that car phone mount wouldn't grip her Moto G3 properly because the Moto G3 gets pretty thick down there towards the bottom where the grips were trying to, you know, the, the grips of her phone mount were trying to hold it. Um, and so we added like that rubber net to, to that setup uh, and solved her problem. A, a couple of random things before we wrap up. Um, so one of the things that I do appreciate about this uh, phone mount is that it, it is pretty easy to like quickly take pictures using my uh, phone's camera, uh, even when it's in the phone mount. Um, so the back facing camera on my phone is in the upper right hand corner of the phone's body. So it's pretty easy to just like, like if I see something up ahead that I want to take a picture of and I have a few seconds to, you know, prepare myself, like I can easily unhook the the one part of the net that's on that corner and just kind of like hold it down with my finger so that it's not covering the camera anymore um and then i can you know fairly well like angle the the camera towards whatever i want to take a picture of and then snap a picture one kind of meta thing that's a little bit strange is that like um when i found this phone mount on the company's own website um it does have like a proper unique name on their website it's called the copilot um but whenever i find it on uh amazon listings it's got like this super generic like name that universal premium phone mount f- for bi- most motorcycle bike handlebars adjustable fits all of these to, and then like it lists a whole bunch of different smartphones and whatever um so that's kind of weird um also like the company that makes this like this is the only phone mount that they make um and then they have a few other products that are just like here's a backpack and here's something else and you know it's like i i don't really i don't know what this company is um it's a little bit confusing to me So, yeah, my kind of takeaway is that I'm going to keep using uh, mine for as long as it, like, continues to securely grip my phone. But when it does come time for me to buy a new one, uh, I think I'll be trying, like, a different model. Um, So if you have suggestions, I would love to hear them. Come find us on the subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash SO91. Second Opinion is supported by listeners like Quentin Pongratz, who voluntarily joined us on Patreon. If you would like to help out as well and get some cool perks along the way, you can find us at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on the Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.